So in this lecture, we're going to talk about looping structures in Julia, specifically for loops and while loops. <clears throat> so we're going to start this by defining a, an iterator. In this case, uh, there's several iterators. We'll talk about what those are. But in this case, it's just a regular array. And the array is of type any because I'm storing an integer, uh, a floating point number, and a string in the array. And we can then iterate over that array with this looping structure. So uh, we say for item in a list, uh, and it does have a end, uh, end statement for the body of the for loop. In this case, the body of the for loop is just going to print out each item in the list, right? So each time through the loop, the, the variable item will take on the value, 1, 2.0, and hello. And you can see them printed to the screen light right here. So that loop is identically equivalent to this type of code uh, where we're printing out, you know, a list is, or, or I'm sorry, the variable item is assigned to the first value in a list and then that's printed to the screen and then the second value and third value, just, just like that. So this is, this type of uh, activity uh, is called unrolling a loop where you, uh, and a lot of compilers will, will do that for you for certain size loops and different optimizations. So another thing we can iterate over are step ranges. Uh, so step ranges are just monotonically increasing sets of integers defined with this notation. You can also you know, add uh, the actual step itself. So if you wanted to go in steps of one or two, for example, you could do something like this. Um, and so in this case, it's just uh, going so zero, uh, two, four, and then six, and then squaring it each time and printing it to the screen. So these step ranges are other, and there are other types of ranges within Julia. Uh, lin ranges are you know, basically a li linear space of numbers between two numbers that are separated by a consistent uh, delta. We can also iterate over tuples. So a tuple is another type of item that can be iterated over, or type that can be iterated over, and the syntax here is you know equivalent to arrays. Uh, like like many many other things in Julia, uh, tuples and arrays. Working with tuples and arrays can be very similar, uh, except you know of course tuple, tuples are immutable. We can also iterate over dictionaries. So by default, when you when you have a loop over a dictionary, uh, it's going to return both the keyword and the value. So it returns a tuple, and then you can unpack the tuple. In this case, uh, again, you know taking on keyword and value uh, each time through the loop, and then I'm just interpolating those into a string and, and printing it out here for this example. Um, some, another common activity we do in loops is we want to basically grow lists or store items in a list. So in this case, we start uh, with an empty vector. And then each time through the loop, we're going to push uh, an the exclamation point there on the push. Any operation in Julia that has an exclamation point implies that the operation is done sort of in place. So each time through the loop, uh, a list, the variable that's assigned to a list or the, the, the array that's assigned to a list will grow by, uh, you know, and the value that's gonna grow by will be item squared. So again, in this case, just squaring the numbers from zero to 10 and adding them to the loop as it, as it goes. And then finally, after the loop exits, we're printing out a list. So you can see that, you know, it originated uh, like this, and then it and it grew each time. And in fact, I guess we could see how it grows one uh, one iteration at a time by printing it out as we as the loop progresses. So you can see again, initially we just has one value, and then two, and then three, and then four, and so on. So that's one way to uh, kind of create a list on the fly. There's another thing called a, a comprehension or list comprehension in Julia where we basically can, using this kind of syntax, uh, it's kind of a for loop uh, written inside the syntax of, a, of an array. Or in this case, we say, you know, the body <clears throat> of what we're doing comes first, followed by, you know, for and the iteration. So uh, in this case, these are very efficient ways to, to kind of, uh, create lists on the fly. And the body of the function here is very simple. We're just squaring it. But, you know, this could be a function called to something far more complex. Uh, that that was that took item as a, as an uh, argument to the function, for example. Um, so we can also enumerate uh, things. So in this case, we have a tuple, and we're going to iterate over the tuple. But in addition to the values of the tuple, so the the individual strings here, a tuple of strings, we're also going to 
uh, want to return the count or the index uh, of its, you know, of, of the corresponding value. So in this case, we can use this enumerate function. We, we wrap a, a tuple and enumerate, uh, continue that way, and then printing out each item as we go. Uh, so finally, we also have while loops. Uh, in this case, you know, a while loop will iterate until the, the statement uh, becomes false. And so in this case, we start off with uh, i equal to zero, and the statement is i less than five. So of course, it's true to begin with, and then we print out the value of i and then add one to it, uh, and we continue to do that. Of course, there's always a danger with while loops that you'll get stuck in infinite loops because the, the statement never evaluates the true. So most while loops can be replicated with a for loop uh, that has like a maximum iteration. Not all, but most while loops can be iterated, uh, can be replicated with this kind of structure, which is a little safer. So in this case, even if we only want to print out the, the you know, first five items from zero to 10, uh, the way we can do that is we can basically, to ensure that we don't get an infinite loop, uh, we can ensure that there's a maximum number of iterations, in this case, 10, and then we just say if i equals is greater than four, then we'll break out of the loop. And so as soon as the code, as soon as this statement evaluates to true, this break statement will exit the for loop immediately uh, at that time. So it's just one way to kind of replicate this behavior of a while loop in a in a little bit safer manner.